This is Microvellum University, where we create extraordinary things with ease using Microvellum Toolbox. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add a new piece of hardware to a project that includes the hardware machine tokens. It's gonna be a concealed support bracket. I showed this bracket in a section drawing of an office lobby desk that I built in another video. Now, if you wanna add another piece of hardware that's not this bracket, you can use this video as reference. The process is pretty much the same for adding all new hardware. So let me open up Toolbox and get started. If you watched the other video on building a custom product with the solid modeling tools, then thanks for coming back and watching how to add this bracket to the product. To do this means the hardware also needs to be added to the project. So I'll go through the steps on doing that. And these steps can be repeated if you also want this bracket to be saved to the library. To get started, open up a new drawing. This will be the new hardware DWG file. This is the bracket I've already drawn in 2D. The drawing is rotated this way because I'm gonna have it be associated to a part in the product. When the hardware is associated, meaning it's basically connected to a part, it needs to be laying down the same way the part it's touching gets nested for the CNC, if that makes sense. Think of it like this. The wall stud will be laying like this on the nested sheet, so the hardware needs to go the same way. And also, I made sure I have it placed where I want in relation to the 0, 0, 0 coordinates. This is also called the insertion point. When the hardware is part of a product, this is its base point. So after you spent the time getting it all detailed in 2D, Use the AutoCAD solid modeling tools to turn it into a solid. You can use the extrude command to do this, but if you need holes, it's easier to use press pull. Do this to all the parts that make up this piece of hardware. Then verify the insertion point before saving it to the database so it draws correctly when used in a project. I like to do this by drawing a line and making its starting point at 0, 0, 0. I'm using tab here to cycle through X, Y, and Z. Now it's ready to be saved to the database. The save location will be in the graphics folder under your current configuration. Now this name is going to be used when I add it to the hardware library. So I saved a copy to the clipboard. Next step is going back into the current room of the project and open up part properties. You can also use edit design data to do this, but it's just as easy to add new hardware through part properties. First, I want to find the part that this hardware is going to be associated to. Its origin is going to be used to locate the support bracket. Now select the Hardware tab and right-click in the open space to add new hardware. Then to the Edit Hardware button to start making a project-level material. The description of the hardware can be anything, but Toolbox is set up to find the hardware in the database if it matches the drawing file name. A value here will be the estimate price for the job costing report. And if the description is not going to be the name of the drawing file, then that file name needs to be added to this field here. Okay, now for the properties of the hardware. So even though this isn't a part, it still needs something in the width, height, and depth parameters. The values don't do anything, it just can't be left blank. Enter zero for the associative rotation angle. I can come back and change that if I need to. And now the origin and the X, Y, Z rotation. Now this is why I wanted to find that wall stud it'll be associated to. I'm going to go ahead and copy its origin and paste it here. I'm going to leave the Y origin at zero and the Z origin will be how far it is from the floor. For the other rotation angles, these are just left blank if the hardware is associated. Then hit save and redraw. Okay, so this is what happens when a hardware is not associated to a part. Just because I have the associative drawing name in the material doesn't automatically position it where I want it. So back to part properties, and I'll need to move it over in X, the thickness of the part. And in Y, I can copy the Y origin of the part and use that. Now to adjust the Z origin, because I forgot this counter is at desk height. Then save and redraw, and it should be good. Well, almost good, at least it's not red. So back to part properties one more time, and change the associative rotation angle. For this one, it's gonna to need to be 180. There, that's how it should be. But what if I wanna add holes to make it easy for the shop to attach? Well, that's where hardware machine tokens come in. To add a hardware machine token, open the material file, and then the hardware library. Find the project level hardware and right click for the option to show hardware machine tokens. 
If you're not familiar with hardware machine tokens, I suggest checking out some of our articles on the Microvalum Knowledge Base Network, and also take a look at some of the door pulls in the hardware library. They use hardware machine tokens, and by seeing how something that's already in Toolbox works, can give you some good insight on how to make things that you want to add work to. Anyway, let me get back into adding these tokens. After you've added a token from the list, you'll need to give it X, Y, and Z values. Now these values are referring to the drawing of the hardware. So I'll open up the DWG file and verify where in X, Y, and Z I'm going to need these holes. Measure from the insertion point. I'm using the shortcut DI after picking a base point, and then before selecting the next point, you can right click to open this menu and use the mid between two points option. Now that I know my values, I'll go back into the material and enter that into the hardware machine token. For the drill depth, give it the thickness of the part for a through hole and hit OK when done. For this hole to appear in the drawing, just redraw the selected product. You can also see it when using the command to draw part in 2D. But notice here it's showing up as red. So this means it's a phase 6 operation. Now, I'm not going to want that when everything else on this part is phase 5. So the Z value of the machine token will need to change. And if you want an array of holes, you can set a start and end value for X and a distance between holes. First to check the drawing of the graphic. OK, so 4 inches in between and 14 and 5 16 to the last hole. Now to enter those values inside of the machine token, the end Y value will be the same as the start since the holes are all in a straight line. And to make that hole start on the other side of the part, in Z, enter a negative value of the part thickness minus 0.01. You'll see this 0.01 used all throughout Toolbox. It's to make sure that the token is actually touching the part. Then finally to wrap up this session of training. Back into the drawing one last time to redraw the product. And make sure the holes are being machined on phase 5. So oh, that's good. Green holes mean phase 5. And there's the completed desk with a little added support for the countertop. Well, don't stop here. There's plenty more learning to come. Check out our other training videos on microvellum.com and our YouTube channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.